Kenyans in the diaspora have time and again faced numerous challenges when attempting to invest in real estate. From being sold non-existent land by property farms to being told a property is being put up only to realize it was all a facade. Many have been taken advantage of and conned. AMG Realtor CEO Mr. Andrew Gitau, like many others, has been a victim of such. Speaking to Alex Chamwada, he narrated his experience. When we were living with my wife, the, we had uh, a little bit of saving. And of course now uh, we had been given a little money in the wedding. Yeah? So what had remained, we decided to buy a plot. And we actually gave to the money to one of our friends. That was 2006, who was in the land business. And uh, he sold us this plot. And up to today, <laughs> we, can't, we have never seen the title for that plot. And we have never seen the, 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 the land itself. I can't tell you this is the particular plot. Even when, I was, uh, when we were in New York, and the little savings that we could make because of the allowances that I used to get, my biggest dilemma was how do I, who can I trust this money with? With billions of shillings sent back into the country from foreign countries, it is a sad tale for many after their hard-earned money abroad is also misappropriated by friends and relatives. Unbeknownst to most, diaspora remittances have since become Kenya's top foreign exchange earner, beating major exports such as coffee, tea, and horticulture. This is because Kenyans living and working abroad for example, in 2022 alone, sent over 453 billion into the country. Mr. Andrew's story is not an isolated case. The Tungane Diaspora Union Chairman Amos Washira narrated how on October 28, 2021, while in Ireland, he learned of the demolition of his rental house in Pangani. Nairobi, where he had invested over 5 million in repairs after he acquired it through a mortgage. The gang pulled down a section of the building where he had been paying monthly mortgage payments of 140,000 Kenya shillings. He went on to say that his call to the police bore no fruits. In my quest for answers and justice, I immediately sought legal help and reported the matter to the police, only to discover they were part of the syndicate in grabbing the property, Mr. Washira mentioned to a leading publication in the country. This incident led to the formation of Tungane Diaspora Union, where he is the chairman. Tired of all the scams that have happened, other unions have been formed by Kenyans in the diaspora. Jumbo Diaspora Investment Group is another example. Comprised of over 300 Kenyans in the diaspora, the union recently launched the Kitusuru Amani Gardens project. It is my pleasure to now declare Kitusuru Amani Gardens, this wonderful diaspora project, open. The chairperson of the group, Ms. Phyllis Wamboy, affirmed that the project would help those who fall prey to fraudulent individuals. I'm telling you, the joy I have in me is just like the joy a mother feels when he delivers her first child. That's how I'm feeling right now. Because this is my child. And not just me, the whole group, we are overjoyed. I'm telling you. But because I don't want to take much time, because we are running out of time, let me tell you, I don't want to speak specifically to the diaspora people, because we have suffered a lot when we are in abroad. The con men have been stealing from us. They come abroad, they promise lads, good lads, mafuta mafuta, and then they also promise us houses, good houses, and then we buy their ideas. But when we come here, nothing, zero. Millions and millions of shillings. The diaspora people can witness what I'm saying. And that is when this group was formed. We said enough is enough, not anymore. Enough is enough. We formed this group 
and said, we're going to do it ourselves. And we have been doing it remotely. So I'm encouraging my fellow diasporans that we can do it. We can invest in Kenya because we have to. East or West, home is the best. It is with great pleasure and a sense of pride that I stand before you today to celebrate this remarkable achievement uh, by this group. This gathering here marks a significant occasion and a testament to the strong spirit um, and determination of our diaspora community. Today, as we celebrate the triumph of 300, is it 300? 300 visionary individuals who dare to dream um, in a big way, in a land far, far away from home, uh, and yet who remained committed to making a significant impact and contributing to our country's development agenda. As we think about those 300, I am reminded of Gideon and his 300 men um, who went to war. This success here serves as a symbol of what can be accomplished when individuals come together for a shared purpose. Let me assure you that as government, we are working on the modalities and frameworks and systems that will continue to protect diaspora investments. We continue to ask that you use qualified, certified, verified vendors in your journey, um, even as we work hard to protect and to champion your rights and welfare here and abroad, because that is a big part of our six-point mandate. Therefore, I call upon our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to form purposeful groups that not only connect them to their roots, but also allow you to do more back home. On this, I look forward to your next project. I am told it will seek to amplify His Excellency President William Ruto's affordable housing initiative um, by building houses that are targeting lower income earners, which is in line, as you know, with our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. So I welcome that opportunity, and we look forward to seeing how we can work with you um, on that particular project. While the risk of being conned exists, being cautious, conducting thorough research, and seeking professional advice can significantly reduce the chances of falling victim to real estate scams. Remember, it is always better to be safe than sorry when making significant investments, especially from a distance. Thank you for watching African Real Estate TV.